Uh, let's go to Senator Mitchell. Item number six, SB 289. Senator Mitchell, I have a, uh, just a real quick question for you. Don't play with me, Senator Nathan. No, no. Why is it that Senator Hall never seems to be here in the hearings? He just kind of comes and goes and... What, what, what's, what's up going Senator on? Senator Hernandez, contrary to what popular belief or what you might assume, I am not the boss of him. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do have a son, but it ain't him. <laughs> he, has, he has a lovely mother. Uh, so let's call her. Let's call her. Let's call her. <laughs> let's call his mother. She's a lovely woman. Maybe she could shed some insight. I'm glad that uh, the, con the Mitchell Hernandez Comedy Act uh, awakened everybody <laughs> for the balance of today's hearing. I have, I'm pleased to present to you Senate Bill 289, Telehealth Reimbursement. Let me begin by accepting the committee amendments. Um, both those are listed on page six and seven of the analysis, plus a, an additional amendment that is included in the mock-up um, that has been provided to members. Uh, all done in consultation with committee staff. Page six and seven in the mock-up, and we also uh, are taking an amendment to delay implementation of the bill until January 1, 2017. This bill will expand access to health care services by requiring health insurance companies licensed in California uh, to cover telephone and electronic patient management health services. Telehealth is the use of electronic information <clears throat> and telecommunications technologies to support long distance clinical health care, patient and professional health related education, public health and health administration. Medical care provided through, the telehealth, through telehealth offers benefits to both consumers and healthcare providers as it offers faster and more convenient treatment as well as reduces lost work time and reduces overall health care costs. When providers are able to answer, answer patient questions over the phone or electronically, it reduces unneeded office visits and wait times for consumers, in turn increasing the capacity of providers to treat more patients in person. Telehealth services are especially convenient in rural and remote areas as they allow a patient the ability to avoid long and unnecessary trips to the doctor's office for consultations that can be handled over the phone or electronically. The specific services covered by this bill include telephone communications, email, live video conferencing, and store and forward technologies which capture and store medical information that is then forwarded to a provider for the evaluation. Telehealth services can include meaningful consultations that can substitute an in-person meeting with your doctor, consultations where the doctor can give substantive medical advice, make a diagnosis, provide self-care consultations, et cetera. Not everyone in the state has access to these critical services, and that's what we hope to change with this bill. Currently, insurance companies in the state vary in reimbursing for these services and often deny provider requests for coverage depriving patients of a reasonable alternative to in-person provider evaluations. This bill will increase telehealth insurance coverage for millions of Californians. Um, Chaburp um, has uh, released a an analysis. Um, it was predicted that this bill will allow for an up to 15% decrease in more costly in-person visits, increasing the capacity for more inpatient visit visits significantly by anywhere from one to three and a half million visits. Overall, use of telehealth technologies can reduce the gap in care experiences between higher and low income Californians as well. I have two witnesses here to provide um, um, background and information about the need for this bill, and I ask for your favorable consideration. Thank you. Please uh, state your name and proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Amy Durbin with the California Medical Association, sponsors of the bill. SB 289 requires coverage of services that involve specific situations where physicians are providing substantial medical care to a patient that is essentially the same exact care that would be provided in an office, yet currently are denied purely because it's not provided in an office. This leads to underutilization of these services and limits a very valuable tool, technology, in increasing access to care, especially in the areas that need it most. Um, I was going to provide a few examples. I'll, I'll just 
provide one to be brief. Um, so an established patient living in a rural area can contact their primary care physician via secured email, say regarding a flare up of eczema, of which the patient has a history presenting in large irritable patches of skin on the hands, making it difficult for them to work. The physician obtains a brief history via secured email and has the patient send a picture of the affected areas to verify whether the flare-up is of sufficient severity to support an in-office visit or consultation with a specialist. Based on the history, assessment and picture, physician phones and a prescription for cream, no <laughs> office visit is required. There are many examples and benefits for the range of patients that these telehealth services can help, uh, such as diabetic patients and those seeking mental health services and this bill is a step forward in assuring that ability. Now you'll be hearing testimony next regarding California's progress on telehealth and other states' progress on telehealth and the many that have passed similar legislation to this bill to require coverage of these services. And although each may define it differently and require coverage differently as well, California must not fall behind in this arena. We must make sure that these services are available to Californians, services that are more efficient and cost effective than in-office visits by allowing access to them through coverage and thereby increasing access to care across the board as well. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Please state your name. Yes, my name is Mario Gutierrez. I'm the uh, director of the Center for Connected Health Policy. I'm here to provide expert testimony on the trends and benefits of telehealth policy. Uh, we are a um, nonprofit public interest uh, center, uh, center that's funded by uh, several of the major foundations in the state. Um, as well as the federal government to be the National Telehealth Policy Resource Center. Uh, and so in that regard, we have done a complete analysis of all of the, the telehealth uh, laws, regulations, and policies across the country. Uh, and I'm pleased to say that California, as a result of the passage of AB 415, uh, the Telehealth Advancement Act of 2011, is leading the country in many areas. Uh, but um, still there are areas in which the state lags behind. Uh, and several important aspects. Currently, 14 other states reimburse for remote patient monitoring, uh, an area where there's solid evidence of significant cost savings and improved quality of care, and particularly in the management of heart disease, COPD, and other chronic diseases in older, older adults. Uh, yet our Medi-Cal program still does not reimburse uh, for remote patient monitoring, despite the legislative intent of AB 415. California is, only, is also one of 24 states that has some form of payment for parity uh, with private providers, but um, not in the group of seven that have unconditional uh, requirements under their parity. And despite the removal of the prohibition of the use of email and phone consultation from statute under AB 415 in 2011, the Department of Health Services still does not reimburse physicians for these needed services. Another quirk in California's Medi-Cal law is one that prohibits California's licensed physicians in good standing from being certified for Medi-Cal billing that reside outside the state. Uh, this limits the expansion of telehealth care and is against the trend in most other states. For example, Virginia just passed a law just to, just to do just the opposite of California's uh, current policies. In California and across the country, the use of technology enabled health care has moved to the mainstream. The evidence continues to grow as the benefits of meeting the growing shortage of primary care and specialty providers expanding demand for timely care and result in Medi-Cal expansion and the California Covered Health Exchange. Uh, and with a steady movement toward value-based payments and alternative payment models, we believe telehealth is not only a luxury, but it's a necessity. To be clear, telehealth technologies is not meant to replace in-person care. Mm -hmm. Rather, these emerging technologies have become a valuable tool for enhancing the care experience. Whether it's saving lives with telestroke connections to rural hospitals or providing comfort to support for parents with children with palliative care, Connected health technologies have made a positive impact on our health system. From the patient's perspective, there is growing evidence that patients not only embrace it, but in some cases even prefer it. One only needs to look at Kaiser Permanente here in California, where in 2013, 10.5 million visits were provided uh, virtually using internet mail, mobile phone, video, and an 85% response rate of very good or excellent when describing the virtual visit experience. The ability to stay connected to your care provider, avoid costly trips to after hours care, and to consult with your care team from home, work, or school when is needed for future health care is the future. In summary, while California is poised to lead the country in making quality health care available and accessible to all through expanded coverage and enhanced use of communications technology, the real challenge still remains in establishing a clear policy direction and the full implementation of all these policies by the department, the health plans, health systems, and our community providers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in support. Mr. Chair, members, Tim Madden, representing the California chapter of the American College of Emergency Physicians, in support. Thank you. Please uh, state your name and position. 
Jerry Jeffy, representing the California Chronic Care Coalition, in support. Catherine Austin Scott, representing the California Academy of Physician Assistants, in support. Greg Herner, California Healthcare Institute, in support. Christina Romero, Planned Parenthood Affiliates of California, in support. Sandra Poole, California Black Health Network, in support. Jody Hicks with the California Academy of Family Physicians, in support. Opposition. Stephanie Watkins on behalf of the Association of California Life and Health Insurance Companies. First, I would like to thank the author and sponsor for, and staff for the committee for the most recent amendments and working with us on these issues. Unfortunately, we still have an opposed and less amended position. We have a couple outstanding issues that we would like to continue to work on. Um, one being, as this bill would be a new benefit mandate and plans would be required to cover a new service, we think it's important that patients are made aware that they will be subject to a co-payer deductible. As we've outlined, we would like to see some requirement at the point of contact that um, individual enrollees or insureds would be informed that there would be a copay associated to these services. Um, we'd also like to see some um, additional parameters put around um, the electronic patient management services and what the definition is for those. I know we've referenced CBT codes and I think we're working through that, but we'd like to just make sure that, that we are really, really clear about what services are covered and what would be the responsibility of the um, enrollees and insureds, especially given the fact that they would be responsible for co-pays and deductibles. Um, we would like to just point out that Shaburp has noted that there would be an additional cost to the enrollees and we think it's important to, to ensure that we're transparent and that they appreciate and understand those new costs and what the burden would be on them. So for those reasons, we remain opposed unless amended. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? Uh, good evening, uh, Jennifer Cabalas on behalf of the California Association of Health Plans and I'd also like to thank the author, the sponsor and her staff for the hard work uh, in addressing um, the majority of our concerns uh, with the amendments and the mock-up that we received. Um, we still, uh, we also have one outstanding issue and that is that it doesn't, uh, the bill doesn't require that this benefit be in included as a Medi-Cal benefit. There needs to be specific language that stipulates that it can be provided to enrollees in Medi-Cal managed care plans and that authority isn't in the bill and so it's very unclear and so we'd like that clarified for those enrollees that we insure. Thank you. Thank you. Mira Morton here on behalf of the California Chamber of Commerce, also in opposition to the bill. Um, our opposition is a little bit more general, especially for our larger employers who uh, negotiate their benefit packages to suit their employees. Uh, they would like to retain the flexibility to design a package that works for their particular group of employees. And for some, this will absolutely be a cost savings for them uh, and they can negotiate to include that. But for others, this is less valuable to their employees and they'd rather either spend that money on some other benefit or uh, provide the savings and pass it on to their employees. So. Thank you. Questions from the members? I'll move the bill. We have a motion. Well, I'm glad you're finally doing something. <laughs> I'll open. What did you the... do to the chairman? I love you. Oh my Jeffy goodness. Clearly. Ooh. We have a motion by Senator Hall to move the bill. Uh, it, would you like to close? Um, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Just very briefly, um, I, I, I've toured a number of facilities, dialysis centers, others that are using technology in a more efficient, better way to empower and communicate with their patients. And I think back to the dark ages when I was a new mother and having worked at the school for the deaf, fast spiking fevers were always my number one panic. And of course, babies only get fevers at two and three o'clock in the morning. And you know, the old fashioned advice nurse on the phone who could talk you down um, um, was, was helpful. And so to empower people with the opportunity to reach out to a healthcare provider any time of day or night, um, I think is the responsible thing to do. Um, you know, Cal Chamber uh, in their testimony um, talked about their desire to um, be able to have their large employers negotiate based on the needs. I just have to say I was struck by one sentence in their letter of opposition that I received late last week um, that frankly just didn't make sense to me. 
Uh, they quoted the Chaburp analysis uh, and acknowledged that, um, uh, that, that these technologies are, quote, at least any as, at least as effective as in-person visits in terms of health outcomes and diagnostic accuracy, and they can shorten wait times for specialty care diagnosis and treatment, which probably explains their rate of coverage. Um, that seems to me to be what our collective goal should be. But they go on. However, just because they are effective and provide a benefit to some enrollees does not mean the state should mandate coverage for them. I think it does suggest that the state should mandate coverage for them, given the long-term uh, cost effectiveness and given the increase in access to services for those in rural parts of the state, all over the state. And for those reasons, I ask for your I vote. Thank you. And we are at item number six, uh, SB 289, do pass as amended to appropriations. Call the members, please. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, aye. Wynn? Hall? Aye. Paul I. Mitchell. Aye. Mitchell I. Monning. Aye. Monning I. Nielsen. Pan. Aye. Pan I. Roth. Wolk. Aye. Wolk I. Currently has six. Well, well everybody's here. Oh. Yeah, the bill is out. Thank you, sir. First one. Thank you, committee member. This is SB 43, Chairman Hernandez. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Uh, in 2012, the California legislature enacted legislation authored by uh, yes, Senator Monning, who was in the assembly at the time, and myself to establish California essential health benefits under the Affordable Care Act. Earlier this year, the federal government issued new regulations requiring states to update their essential health benefits based on the 2014 benchmark plan the new regulations also created a definition of habilitative services, which is more generous than the California's current definition. Uh, this bill has been introduced to serve as a vehicle for the statutory changes necessary to conform with the federal requirements. And with that, I respectfully ask for an I vote. There is no opposition to this. Uh, oh. Madam Chair and members, Elizabeth Landsberg with the Western Center on Law and Poverty, pleased to be here in strong support. Thank you. Tam Law with Health Access. Tam Law with Health Access California also in strong support. Any other support? Any opposition? Comments? Question? Would you like, there's a motion, would you like, please close? Um, Mr. Ask Chairman. For vote. Please call for the vote. And this will be a due pass to appropriations. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, aye. Wynn? Aye. Wynn, aye. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Mitchell? Aye. Mitchell, aye. Monning? Monning I. Nielsen, Aye. Nielsen I. Pan, Aye. Pan I. Roth, Aye. Roth I. Wolk, Wolk I. 9-0, pass to appropriation. Thank you. Okay, let's all the members are here. We're going to start off at the top. Yeah, let's do the consent calendar first. That's item number four, item number 15, and item number 25. Call the absent. The current vote count is five to zero. Call the absent members. Win. Aye. Win. Aye. Hall. Aye. Hall. Aye. Monning. Aye. Monning. Aye. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen. Aye. Nine. Okay. That current has nine. That those bills are out. Start off with item number one, SB 22. Do pass two appropriations. Current vote count is five to zero. Call the absent members. Win. Aye. Win. Aye. Hall. Aye. Hall. Aye. Monning. Aye. Monning. Aye. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen. Aye. Currently has 9-0. That bill is out. Item number three, SB 115, do pass to appropriations. Current vote count is 5-0. to zero. Call the absent members. Win. Aye. Win. Aye. Hall. Aye. Hall. Aye. Monning. Monning, I Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen, I. That current vote count is nine to zero. Uh, that bill is out. Item number five, SB 203, do pass to appropriations. The current vote count is four to one. Call the absent members. 
Hernandez, Wynn, Hall, Roth, That current vote count is four to one. I can place that on call if you'd like. Item number six. Oh. No, six is out already. Yeah. Item number seven, SB 315. Do pass as amended to appropriations. Current vote count is five to one. Call the absent members. Hall. Aye. Hall, aye. Roth. Wolk. Aye. Wolk, aye. Roth, aye. Eight to one. Current vote count is eight to one. That bill is out. Item number eight. SB 319, do pass to appropriations. Current vote count is six to zero. Call the absent members. When? Aye. When I, Monning, I, Monning I, Hall? Aye. Hall, I. Current vote count is nine to zero. That bill is out. Item number nine, SB 346, current vote count is two to zero. Call the absent members. When? When no, Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Monning? Monning, aye. Nielsen? Nielsen, no. Pan? Roth? Wolk? That current vote count is four to two. That bill fails. Without objection, there'll be reconsideration. Item number 10, SB 396, do pass as amended to appropriations. Current vote count is 3-0. Call the absent members. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Monning? Aye. Monning, aye. Nielsen? Aye. Nielsen, aye. Pan? Aye. Pan, aye. Roth? Aye. Roth, aye. Wolk? Aye. Wolk, aye. Current vote count is 9-0. That bill is out. Item number 11, SB 402, do pass as amended to appropriations. Current vote count is 6-0. Call the absent members. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Pan? Roth? Roth, aye. Current vote count is 8-0. That bill is out. Item number 12, SB 483. Do pass as amended to appropriations. Current vote count is four to zero. Call the absent members. Win. No. Win. No. Monning. Aye. Monning. Aye. Nielsen. No. Nielsen. No. Roth. Wolk. Aye. Wolk. Aye. Current vote count is six to two. That bill is out. Item number 13, SB 484. Current vote count is 6-0. Call the absent members. Win. Aye. Win, aye. Hall. Aye. Hall, aye. Monning. Aye. Monning, aye. Nine, zero. Current vote count is 9-0. to zero. That bill is out. Item number 14, SB 492. Do pass as amended to appropriations. Current vote count is 6-0. to zero. Call the absent members. Win. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Nielsen? Current vote count is 7 to 0. That bill is out. Item number 17, SB 534. Do pass as amended to appropriations. Current vote count is 7 0. Call the absent members. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Roth? Aye. Roth, aye. 9 0. Current vote count is 9 0. That bill is out. File item number 19, SB 591, do pass to appropriations. Current vote count is 5 to 2. Uh, call the uh, absent members. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Roth? Six to two. Current vote count is 6 to 2. That bill is out. 
Item number 20, SB 613, do pass to appropriations. Current vote count is six to zero. Call the absent members. Hall? Paul? Paul, aye. Pan? Aye. Pan, aye. Roth? Aye. Roth, aye. Current vote count is 9-0. That bill is out. Item 21, SB 671, do pass as amended to appropriations. Current vote count is 7-0. Call the absent members. Hall? Hall, aye. Roth? Roth, aye. 9-0. Current vote count is 9-0. That bill is out. Item number 22, SB 675, do pass two appropriations. Current vote count is 6-0. Call the absent members. Wynn? Aye. Wynn, aye. Hall? Aye. Hall, aye. Nielsen? Current vote count is 8-0. That bill is out. Item 23, SB 779, do pass as amended to appropriations. Current vote count is 7-1. Call the absent members. Wynn? No. Wynn, no. Current vote count is seven to two. That bill is out. Oh, she pulled it. Okay. We have uh, item number five, uh, SB two zero three. Do pass to appropriations. Call the absent members. Hernandez. Win. Hall, Roth, that current vote count is four to one. That bill fails. A reconsideration is granted. And uh, that concludes the business of the day. Thank you.